Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for School of Motion. If you're a motion designer getting into Unreal Engine, sooner or later, you're probably going to want to add 3D text into your projects. In this video, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so here I am in Unreal, and I apologize about any of the noise you may be hearing in the background. There's construction, major construction going on. Good news is it's only going to last the next two years. Anyway, here we are, and I'm in a very basic scene. I've got a camera. I've got some basic lighting stuff. I've got a flat plane that I'm using here. And what I'm going to do is add in some text. And to do that, I would think I would just go into my Place Actors tab here and type in text, and 3D text would show up. But it's not here. So what do I do? I've got to go into my plugin setup right here. And from here, I'm going to type in text 3D with the space there. And this will bring up the plugin, which is beta plugin. And so if I click on it, um, I'm going to get this warning that this is a beta plugin and that it's not meant to be used in anything that you're shipping because you never know how that's going to work out. But we're not working with it to make a game. We're working with it to create some motion graphics. And so I want to just add it in. It's really fine. I'll click on yes. And then I've got to restart. So let me do that. And once I restart, the plugin has been enabled. I can close this window out. I'm also going to switch over to my camera view. And from here, if I type in text again, this time I'll see that I've got text 3D. I'm just going to drag this right into my scene. And that instantly places some 3D text right on top of my plane. Now I'm using some materials for the flat plane to make it reflective. And I'll just mention that those come from the free automotive materials that are available in the Unreal store. So now let's look over some of the features of the text. Well, for starters, you can just change the text to whatever you want it to be. So I'm going to type in Unreal, enter. And you know, I don't know why it's located this far down, but I'm going to head all the way down here and go over to uh, vertical and horizontal alignment. I'm going to set that to center. And then I'm going to navigate just so that we're nice and centered there. And then coming back to the top, let's look at some of the features like extrude. I can set this up to something like 10 which makes it a lot thicker. I can also give it a bevel, and I could set that to something, let's go with two, and it's gonna get a little bit rounded there, and it's a little hard to see. But what we'll do is, instead of using the convex bevel type, which is a nice smooth rounded look, I'm gonna try something like linear and take a look what that looks like. So now we can see that bevel a lot better, and it's a little sharper. You could also try other kinds of beveling, like uh, engraved, which is pretty cool, um, and also even something like, let's go with, uh, half circle, which is really nice, creates if you wanted like this sort of like tubular type thing. It does interact poorly with some kinds of text, as you can see in certain spots. I'm just going to go for now with a linear look. I like the way that looks. And I also just want to point out that you can also do an outline of the text, which just creates the beveling on the outline of that text. And if you needed to expand the outline a bit, you could do that. Let's set this to two, for example, which thickens it up. Okay, I'm going to turn off outline now. Of course, I notice my text is uh, sticking through the floor, so let me just raise it slightly so it's just not going through it. That looks good. And there's a lot of other cool things here. I mean, if you've used any kind of 3D text or even text in Photoshop, you're going to be familiar with a lot of the settings that are here. Like we talked about the alignment, there's kerning, if you wanted to separate things out a little more, right? I'm going to undo that, set that back to the default. Um, and if you have multiple words or multiple lines, you can work with the line spacing and the word spacing. I'm just going to stick with this basic, simple text for the rest of this demo, but feel free to play around and have fun and explore. Okay, now what if you want to change your font? Well, it's simple enough to do, it's just not straightforward, so let me show you how. So what happens is we scroll down here, we'll go right to here where we see the font, and if we click down on this, and I'm sorry you can't see this in your capture, but you'll scroll through and you'll see there's really not a lot of fonts to choose from. It's not like working in Photoshop or Cinema 4D where your fonts are all just available to you right here. What you need to do is drag your fonts into the project. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new folder, and I'm going to call that fonts. And I'm going to double click on that and get in there. And then I'm going to grab this GameCube font and drag it in. And we're going to get a little bit of a warning here. It's kind of a question, which is, would you like to create a new font asset using the imported font? And we're going to say yes to that. And that creates two little thumbnails here. One is the original font, which you cannot use. And this one is the actual font that we're going to apply. So let me just hit save all just to save them now that I'm here and done with that. Uh, I'm going to take this, I'm going to drag it right over the font. And that is going to change it to the font that I chose. And so like I said, not hard to do, just really not 
easy to find. And I guess that the way to think about things like fonts and textures and any of the stuff that you're used to dealing with in a traditional 3D background it doesn't quite apply the same way in Unreal. Remember that Unreal is designed to make games, and so it can't rely on just things that are sitting on your computer like a font. It has to bring them in and compile them and make them ready for the game. So even though you've got all these great assets on your computer, whenever you're bringing it into Unreal, it's got to duplicate things and it's got to transform them in different ways so that it can be used in the game. And so that's what's happening there with the font as well. Now, one of the things that I really like in Unreal about 3D text is that it makes it super simple to apply different materials to different parts of the text. So if we scroll down here to the materials, we can see that we've got a front material, a bevel material, an extrude material, and a back material. And so I can just grab hold of one of the materials from our automotive materials here. I'm gonna go into the material settings right here go to the exteriors and go to car paint. Those are pretty cool. And I'm gonna drag this light blue material right over to the front and drop it right on top of that, which makes it blue. I can grab this gold material for the bevel. So it gives us these lines here that are gold. And you know, you can take any color. I could make this purple up on top here. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna give it the same material as our front. And you know, now you've got this really nice looking material that's got gold on the edges, it's being accented in the bevel, which is pretty cool. Now we can also do some interesting things with emissive material. So I'm gonna make some changes to this. Let's uh, first head over to our bevel type and change it from linear. I'm gonna go to engraved, which is gonna make these pieces stick out, which is already pretty cool. Then I'm gonna go into the materials for lights, right? So it's right below license plates right here within the exterior materials and I'm going to take this blue material right here and I'm going to just drag it over to here and I'm going to choose copy here I'm making a copy of this light blue light it looks white but it's actually blue and I'm going to apply that to the gold part right here so now we've got this emissive material that's glowing and we can see the light in the reflection now I like it but I do want to make it a little more blue so I'm going to double click on this and I'm just going to go into the color tint right here and make that blue and I'm going to raise the facing intensity quite a bit and if I click OK and close this out now you can see the reflections more blue and we've got this bluer looking light around the text and if you want to make this glow there's a couple of ways to really do that now I've got a camera in here and I could go into the camera settings and I could go into things like the post process area and I could just go to uh, lens or color grading or there's all these different things here so I can go to lens and I can go into bloom and I can play with that so you could do that directly in camera but if you want to do it for the whole project another way to do that is to go over to right here and click on visual effects post process volume and it's going to create a volume that will affect anything that's within this cube and I want this to be a lot bigger I could either make the cube bigger or I could just Select this cube, this post-process volume, and I could type in the word infinite. And I got this tip from Jonathan Winbush. Um, if you go to infinite extend unbound and you turn this on, basically any changes we make for what happens inside of this cube in the volume will affect the entire world. So with that done, let me uncheck that. And for post-process here, I'm just gonna go down to bloom right here. And I'm going to turn on method. I'm gonna set that from standard to convolution and I'm going to set the intensity up quite a bit. And then I'm going to go down to our lens flare because this is what's causing some of that really weird bloom part that I don't like. So I'm just gonna scroll down until I get to lens flare, which is a little further down. There it is. I'm gonna lower the intensity down to zero. I don't really want that. Coming back up to bloom though, I can really crank this up. And we get a nice glow coming off of this text. And again, if you wanted to do that in camera, all you have to do is go to your camera that you've got, in my case, this one right here. And you could also, again, go down into these settings like Bloom. Like I showed you, there was Bloom right here. You could do the same exact things here, but it will only work when looking through the camera. So I'd like to have it for everything if that's the look I wanted to have overall. That way, when I move around the project, I can see it from no matter what angle I'm in, I can see how it's working. Don't forget, you should always be saving your stuff that you're creating here because uh, it doesn't save by default. Hit save, come up here, hit save, and now you've got this glowing 3D text. One last tip worth mentioning, if you want to have multiple lines of text, you can't just add it in and hit enter. So I can type in Unreal Text here like this, and that just puts it on the same line. If I were to try to hit enter, it doesn't do anything. Let me move this text up so we can see. What I have to do is hit shift enter, 
And then when I come back in, we can see that it's given us two lines of text. Before I sign off, I wanted to take a moment to mention that if you really want to dive into Unreal for 3D animation, you should check out Jonathan Winbush's new Unreal training series from School of Motion. Look, I've been working with 3D tools for two decades, but I found Unreal a little intimidating. It's a very different environment than traditional 3D stuff. Then I took the course last week and I found that much of my 3D knowledge translated really well once I knew my way around the app. And if you're new to 3D, this course is also a really good place to start. As always, I hope that this helps you in your work. Once again, I'm Marlon Rabinowitz for School of Motion. I'll see you soon.